Oh, my ceramic brakes are making sound. Too much of smooth driving, it will do this sound, and then I have to give it a really hard braking. Uh, this morning got up this car ding ding surprise there's also a check engine light here but the car completely drives normal there, there there are absolutely no changes to the way it fires or anything so I suspect it is also some kind of minor problem sometimes if your fuel cap isn't closed tight that will also come up because of the pressure all right so, um, any, anyhow, I'm heading over to uh, Sisma. I, I did not book an appointment this round. Um, I just like, hey, I, I have time because I have a meeting that was cancelled. So, I'm just going to drive my car there and let them have a look at it. Alright, since the last round of uh, major, major service was done over there. I'm not arriving yet, but there's a Jaguar F-Type in front. F-Type 400 <laughs> Hey, I tell you, when when you do that to somebody, right? You see, he, he worked hard, he buy his car, he enjoy his car And you enjoy the, the, the sound And when you give him a thumbs up, right? He, he actually will feel very happy when, you know I always do that not just this type of cars. If I see a Satria stock Satria GTI, a nicely kept EG6, you know, or a Starlet Turbo, Nissan March Turbo, I mean, a car guy cars, put it that way, I, I'll, I'll give a big thumbs up. Yeah. This reminds me of a Top Gear episode where James May is, is driving a Rolls Royce. And then he saw a, a, a nice old Fiat or something. And then he gave the guy a, a, a beep of the horn. And then he put thumbs up. And the guy gave him a middle finger. <laughs> that was hilarious. Anyway. Oh, my ceramic brakes are making sound. Too much of smooth driving, it will do this sound. And then I have to give it a really hard braking. Okay, one more time. The ceramics, I'm not afraid of them. Oh, here! Jam the brakes! Okay, there we go. Ah, the sound should go away. Alright. Okay, park. See if the sound is still there. Ah, see? No more! <laughs> so, those with carbon ceramic brakes, this is how you deal with it when your car is making weird sounds when you are when you apply the brakes just give it a really hard brake like abs inducing kind of brake and then it the sound will go away let me show you guys oh see my new mask yep see that let's get it sorted yep just passed them my car key and uh they're gonna prepare the repair order Later, oh, no, they call it a repair order, but basically some kind of form, right? Because you pass, you pass your car key to them. Obviously, that will be. Oh, this is sold. Congrats to whoever's buying this. I believe it's locked because it's sold. Yep. This is not locked because it's not sold. You know, they have an X5 hybrid, A class. This wasn't here the last round. Two hundred thousand. That pace is still here. The new A class is. I mean, they improve a lot versus the old one, and the interior is still. Oh, this one got a new, special, package or something like a black package or something. This is all black instead of chrome. Huh. 
the C class here. Evoke 5 Series. S class, interesting. What would be the price? 213,000. S400. 89,000 knowledge. Now oh, that's an interior. What a beauty. Still a beauty. Whew. Look at that. Open the door. The seatbelt buckle come up. Mercedes knows how to make you feel special. Power doors. Discovery. And that's Mr. Martin DBS. This is a collector's item. This S. Yep. When when it's a normal DB9, it will be worth about 280-300,000. When you see an S, it's worth 800,000. Same 5.9 litre engine as my car. Same platform. Same dashboard. Um, the regular DB9 makes 470 horsepower. This one makes 510. Alright. And, uh, but mine makes 560. I wonder if it's done. I'll go check it out. So, uh, yep. To check. To check the check engine light. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna go have coffee. So I have to wander around, ah. Uh. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I go upstairs, ah. Uh. Okay. Yeah. Now I can do my work. Ask HP to send me my stuff, so I can work here. I can edit my video here. And uh, the nasi lemak. This is really good. Nice pastry. I can make a coffee myself. And uh. And if I got my laptop, I can just sit over there and do my work. Okay, let me show you the toilet. I hope I don't surprise them. They don't know. This is the toilet of a workshop. Please do not squat. Clean toilets like this. I'm happy to take a dump. Alright, go back upstairs. I just had my lunch, so I'm not gonna have this, but it's really good. All right. So again, I'm not in a premium dealership. I'm in a workshop. <laughs> okay. And uh, last round, they have sanitizers somewhere. I, I believe it's somewhere. You can spray the seat before you use it. Yeah. Okay, guys. This is the printout from the diagnostic report. All right. That's my car. So you're like, wow. No, this is from the exhaust O2 sensor signal rich so the fuel system would because it's, it detects rich over here so here they try to reduce the, the fuel flow but then another thing detected is too lean <laughs> but uh, they've helped me to delete the fault code let's see whether it pop up again all right uh, this one this one level control I think this one was last time during when I went and sort out my air suspension. Okay, 
tire pressure monitoring, nothing much. And then uh, this one, rotary mechanism for front display unit. Yeah, idiot me, I go and put the phone holder there, right? Then when the screen wants to retract, right? It's stuck on my phone holder. See, even that would generate a fault code. Amazing, right? And then it's this one that was a bit persistent. That whereby, call it what? Actuator for assembly mounting. Some type of actuator at the mounting. I, I don't think my car has active mounting like Porsches. But somehow something is there and uh, it will cause a check engine light. So the advice given to me is drive around again. So if it comes up again, then we can be quite sure that that thing has some fault to it. Lah. Right? So, so nothing much, no problem with the car. No problem. So I can go home now. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much. No worries. All right. So, yeah. And I'm here, comfortable, sitting here, reading magazines, drinking coffee. I can have nasi lemak if I want to. And uh, there are also beautiful ladies here. <laughs> All right. And uh, oh, she's so nice. Uh, sanitizer. All right. And a massage chair over here. Yeah. This is the kind of place that you would want to service your car. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, so everything is alright and uh, they offered to wash my car so thank you so much. It's so dirty and every time after a nice wash, ah, oh, that's gonna happen. But anyway, um, yep. So, yep. Thanks guys. This is Sisma Auto Hub and uh, so what I will do is to drive the car first and if it persists, if the, if the problem is still there, then I'll come back for another visit. So far, all the error codes are gone. Oh, I love this sound. Ugh. Yep. <sighs> Yep. The next thing I want to do on this car is to replace that uh, undercover. I mean, to me, those things are wear and tear. Like, you know, it covers your the under part of your engine, uh, of your transmission. You know, and um, they deteriorate over time. Especially the material that Audi uses. Audi uses a material that is more akin to a compressed, hardened foam than a piece of plastic. My BMW uses a piece of uh, hard, basically a plastic, a rubber or plastic, but it's actually more durable. But it doesn't doesn't soundproof as well as that of, uh, of these type of material. But these type of material, they wear because they uh, they get eroded, you know, with, with when, when, when the road is wet, right, it, it, it it soaks, it soaks the hardened, hardened foam and then when there are sands and rocks, right, they hit on the, the cover and they slowly chip it off. Either they chip off a hole or whatnot, over time the, the, the whole piece just, just, just deteriorates, alright? So, yeah, I'm gonna get that replaced. I'm not sure about the price of Audis, I haven't replaced it before, but BMW's uh, undercover that goes, goes below the engine and transmission and the whole piece uh, back in 2018, when I changed it, it cost about 700 to 800 plus labor is close to a thousand. Alright? Yeah. I'm a happy man. At least the car is really healthy, really smooth, and uh, nice. Alright? So, and just now I bumped, to, bumped into, uh, what's his name? Richard. He saw me and then he said hi. He said he brought his BMW here. He's out of warranty, and uh, he's quite happy with with their service so far. Uh, all right, guys, that's it. That's about it. Take care, Vira. You should come out. It's a merging lane. Come out. Yes, I knew that. You're in the wrong lane, so don't worry. I already break my car to let you merge because I'm not an asshole. Okay, let's drive a little bit quicker to enjoy my Audi. I've been 
I've been with my, my Aston for four days. So, uh, this car is so effortless to go fast, but it doesn't provide the oral experience of the Aston. It's just the stupid fart sounds. And uh, that's what that's how they compensate you, you know. Um, you can't hear me sing. Why don't you hear me fart? Yeah, that's their solution. Right. That's a loud fart. And the way this car pulls is visceral. It's it's crazy. It's illegal. You turn, I shall you turn. You you turn. It's just half throttle. I'm not. I didn't even go full throttle. Can you imagine that? It's it's just mad. This is a mad car. Man. If you have a car that is out of warranty uh, or a reconditioned AP car and you stay around this area, you can come over and try their services, which, which I'm very happy. Alright, cheers. There's, an, uh, there's a Perodo Ativa sort of tailgating me just now. They really think their turbo is... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Cute. Cute. For turbos that small, we call them escargo. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs>